At a time when he had already achieved recognition as one of America's most eminent inventors and physicists, Thomas A. Edison conducted a series of experiments in thought transference. He constructed an elaborate electric apparatus and sought by means of it to bring about purely mental communication. But, as he himself freely admitted, he obtained not the slightest results. And yet, Thomas Edison believed in extrasensory perception, for long before this he had met a man called Reese, the man who saw everything. Ken? It was a friend of Thomas Edison's, a young woman named Miss Olson, who first interested him in the man named Reese. A few days later, Reese appeared at Edison's laboratory. Well, let's have a demonstration. All right, sir. Uh, Miss Olson, would you mind going into the other room and writing down on a piece of paper your mother's name, the place of her birth? Uh -huh. and... One minute there, young man. What proof do I have that you and Miss Olson haven't made a few prior arrangements before you ever got here? No. I demand to be the subject. I'll be the one who goes out of the room. And with that, Thomas Edison, his eyes twinkling brightly and a smile of triumph on his face, slipped out of the room and walked across the courtyard to an adjoining building. My experiment with the alkaline electric battery. He couldn't know about that. Because nobody in the world but myself does. Chuckling to himself, he scribbled in small and almost illegible letters the question which had so long troubled him. <laughs> Is there anything better than hydroxide of nickel for an alkaline battery? Then he folded the paper several times and held it clutched in his hand. And then at last he left the building and retraced his steps to the room where Reese and Miss Olson awaited him. He said nothing as he entered. It was Reese who spoke first. Do you really want my opinion, Mr. Edison? Why? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about, young man. Well, you asked me a question, didn't you? And here's the answer. No, there is nothing better than hydroxide of nickel for an alkaline battery. <laughs> Thomas Edison had no explanation for the incident. He could only accept it as valid and authentic, if incomprehensible. As he himself put it, I do not pretend to be able to explain this faculty. I am convinced that the needs of civilization will produce some great discovery by means of men endowed with this power. The rare seers of the present generation will become the multitude of coming generations. In these words, America's great scientist expressed his faith in a power which is still looked upon with skepticism by other scientists of lesser stature than he. A power that enables men to see without the use of their senses. A power incredible but true. True.